the Honorable Minister, Deputy Minister of Health of the Republic of Kenya, the CEO of MAC, Dr. Russia Kellege, various dignitaries who are here, media personalities from all over Africa. I greet you all this evening and thank you very much for honoring the invitation to be here. Allow me, first of all, to thank the CEO of MAC for inviting me to officiate at this very important event when we are recognizing the various media personalities that have been engaged in this campaign to destigmatize infertility on the African continent. Thank you very much, Russia, for welcoming me. I want to thank the government of Kenya for also hosting this function. Of course, when you see a minister turning up for an event, then you know that they are involved. The chief administrator, you know Kenya decided to take on a different system. The minister is the cabinet secretary. For us, we call them ministers. The chief administrative officer, because the work in health is too much. So the new title is that of a deputy minister. So, MC, please note that, Brian. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, fertility care has been a gray area in most of our African settings. Infertility, as you all know, has been a major challenge. And, of course, WHO estimates that 25% of the couples have actually had challenges of infertility. And of course, as you all know, the burden or the blame has often been to the women. And matters are further compounded by the fact that the surveys have been based on women's fertility, infertility, and therefore male infertility remains unknown, not only on the African continent, but globally. So the statistics that we are quoting are actually statistics based on the women who have come out, gone to the health facilities, or have spoken about their infertility. So we need to work doubly hard to get the men involved. And thank you, Mark, for actually coming up with this initiative of uh, not only destigmatizing infertility, but also creating awareness about infertility. Uganda has been no exception, as you all know, just like most of the African countries, we have had programs regarding reproductive health, talking about family planning, sexually transmitted infections, no mention about infertility. And yet this is also a reproductive health issue. So as government of Uganda, I'm glad that I took up this mantle which I always tell my story because it was difficult to even convince my technical people to take up this subject matter. The talk has been on family planning and how to encourage couples to have fewer children. And here I was bringing on board others, another group of people. And we all know that this is a human right. Giving birth is a human right. And if it is a human right, then it's government's responsibility to take up this mantle and assist couples that have challenges in giving birth. I'm glad that in my country, this matter, of course, is enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. So our Constitution recognizes uh, the right to uh, having a family. And for that matter, it is also our responsibility to ensure that services are available for those that cannot be able to give birth and need to be assisted. Unfortunately, this has not been an area that was taken up by our government. However, despite that, I'm glad that with support from the media, the Ugandans who are here, please stand up. Because when we launched this campaign in 2016, please help me clap for these people. <clears throat> Thank you very much. 
when we launched this campaign in February 2016, without technical support, I said the technical officers will find me. I moved on, launched the campaign, and it was those men and women that you have seen that helped me drive this agenda. There were efforts to build the women's hospital, but even in building the state-of-the-art women's hospital, issues of the assisted reproductive te technology, IVF, remained a gray area. But I'm glad talking about infertility, in the state-of-the-art women's hospital that we have put up, we have a whole two floors now dedicated to fertility care services, and the IVF services will be provided. This is a new hospital that we hope to launch, hopefully maybe in uh, next month in Uganda. So thank you very much, media, for making it, oh, making my work easy. Dr. Russia told you she's, um, she does not have children. You know, the media can pick it the other way. And the story will be different. That you see she's infertile and is encouraging. Eh? You know the way we pick things and twist them. She does not have children by choice. She, I've had a chat with her when we first met when she came. I think this was in 2014. 2013, 2014. 2013. And she told me all the children in the world are my children. So she's, no, she's not a mother. She does not have children by choice. Not that she's infertile. But in the process of working on, of course, we're working with Mark on different programs on diabetes and cancer. And out of that, she came across different women who were suffering. And then they broke their story. That I got this problem of diabetes, hypertension, and so on, other cardiovascular diseases. As a result of the abuses from my husband, I was barren. And therefore, the abuses and all that goes with it, the community, the way they perceive barren women, they ended up getting this challenge. So that is why Russia is what she is, not that she is infertile. So ladies and gentlemen, in the developed world, as you all know, the fertility care services are readily available. While in developing countries, this service still remains unavailable. Where it is, the costs are very exorbitant. And the majority of the poor people cannot afford these services. Uganda is no exception to most of your countries. We have fertility care services, but these five, no, six clinics now. But all these are private. And of course, since they are private, we as government cannot do much in asking them to reduce the costs. But I want to thank Mark because now we have that facility that I talked about and Mark has even gone ahead to help us train an embryologist who will be working at the government facility and they've pledged to train more in the country. And of course this will help in bringing uh, the costs for fertility care, especially the IVF uh, down. So ladies and gentlemen, the fertility care services, Kenya has told you these services are not regulated. Similarly in my country, this is still uh, has been a gray area. We don't have any regulations, any laws in place, but I'm glad that now we're in the process of having these laws. Uh, the draft is being worked on and we hope that very soon we'll have this uh, bill in place. I will still want to appeal to the media that once we move into having this, this law in place, please support, support us. Please let us connect. Don't disconnect. Hmm? This is where the challenge normally is. I want to say this because you know we had a law, the marriage and divorce bill that we are working on. As you all know, every day people are divorcing. Formally married, legally married, they divorce. And the laws that exist currently were made way back in the, I think, early 50s or late 50s during the colonial times. 
So we were trying to bring the laws in line with the various court rulings. And oh my God, I want to say the media, you destroyed our efforts. The story was different out in the media. And within a short time, even the head of state who was supporting this effort backtracked and we couldn't move with this bill because the issue was all oh, women are now going to be married on contract. Just imagine that kind of story. That a woman will get married here today, after 10 years she leaves, you have paid dowry the next time she's the other side. And people took it that way. So however much we explained, the media was saying something else. And of course at the end of the day, everything came to a standstill. So I want to appeal to the media, let us be partners in destigmatizing infertility. Because it's not anybody's wish, it's not anybody's design to have this problem. But unfortunately, people have found themselves in this situation. So when the bill comes up, please, if you joined with the religious leaders, we shall not be able to move. And yet we need this law. Because the issues of the surrogate mothers and so on, we have to regulate this area. The issues of, you know, quality, the issues, there are so many issues around uh, fertility care services that are being offered. So we have to ensure that there is this regulation in place that we will able, be able to look at the various aspects of the in vitro fertilization and of course ensure that everything is done professionally but also that we don't end up with other problems and challenges. Some people have been saying already even before the bill is in place that we are distorting families. Now you can imagine that kind of talk. I don't know how families can be distorted because if I'm unable to have a child and I really want to have a child and I get to a, 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 maybe the IVF clinic and through that I'm able to be assisted you can get my follicle, you know, have the fertilization outside my womb with my husband and then implant it afterwards. Is that a problem? Haven't I been assisted? So these laws are really well intentioned. Let us work together as partners so that we can be able to move um, this process forward. So on behalf of the government of Uganda, I want to thank Mark for the training opportunity of the embryologists, not only in Uganda, but also in other countries. This, we hope, will help increase in the number of specialists in the country. And of course, also help, as I said earlier, in reducing the costs. Media personalities, as you all know, you have an important role to mobilize the masses and shape their opinion. You wield a lot of power and influence, and you can, play, you can really play an important role in changing the attitude of the public in certain issues, and specifically on this subject of infertility that we are talking about today. So your role in sensitizing the masses will also help reduce the stigmatization and also social suffering of infertile women, as it will raise awareness also about male infertility. So you as the media, you are all around us. And you have, you, have to, you have seized boundaries of different societies, making the world a global village. You can see one incident happened in Kenya of that unfortunate lady, Jacqueline Mwende. But within a short time, the whole world knew about this sad story of a man who became jealous after he had more or less abandoned this woman and the woman got pregnant with another man. He went and cut off her hands. But um, I want to thank Mark and the government of Kenya that came in to support this, uh, this lady and she's now living a very comfortable life. So you, of course, Brian has been talking about the only country that, that uh, taxes social media. We want to have more expressways, and we cannot have them if we don't collect taxes. But we are, we are also listening to... <laughs> <laughs> so
So within a short time, everybody is talking about Uganda taxing social media and so on. But 200 shillings, hmm? actually 6,000 per month, is, is, is less, than, less than $2. It's $1.7 a month. Hmm? Now I'm hearing mamas here. Now you are just like the Ugandans. We'll definitely sit down, ladies and gentlemen, and of course review that. You've already heard the president, we've heard the cries of the people, reducing the figure from 1% for sending mobile money to 0.5%. So we hope that parliament will sit, we listen to the people, we are representatives of the people, and I can hear you also representing them here. So ladies and gentlemen, I really want to end by, first of all, congratulating uh, all those uh, people who will be picking awards this evening. Uh, it's very unfortunate that the, my, from my country, a number of them have been writing so many wonderful stories. The media houses, NTV, NBS, have been running all these stories, but unfortunately, I think they did not um, uh, see the advert and did not apply, but I'm glad that moving forward, after this engagement, uh, we shall see a number of applications from Uganda. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to end by saying that the struggle still continues. The journey to destigmatizing infertility has just started. And let's all work together to break the negative belief among societies, among our communities on this subject of infertility. We already have the platform and research shows that on average, every man or human being spends not less than four hours either watching TV, reading newspapers, or even on social media. So let us use that platform to change the world, the perception of the people on this, uh, this issue of infertility. As I said before, please let us connect, not disconnect. Thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you all.